Hey everyone, check out this game changer for Flux models. We are talking crazy fast image generation. Let's boot up ConfUI and put this speed to the test. Right now, I've got ConfUI running on a 16 gigabytes VRAM server GPU. See that status bar up top? It's live tracking VRAM usage like a heartbeat monitor. Watch this. Starts at 36%. Deep to 4%. Jumps to 14%. Peaks at 33%. Translation is barely breaking a sweat. Uses less than 8 GB total. With this setup, we are cranking out 1024 by 1024 images in 26 seconds flat. Not gonna lie, that's wild. Let's pixel peep the results. The details look fantastic, don't they? Quick reality check. My test GPU here is a Tesla T4, basically the Honda Civic of GPUs. Your grandma's RTX 3060 with 12GB VRAM would crush this. And if you got a bit like on RTX 4090, you'll be generating images faster than I can see render. We are talking single digit seconds here. Let's break down this workflow back in ConfUI. These look mostly familiar but with two key upgrades. A dedicated flux dit loader and a text encoder loader. Oh, and this whole setup is called Nunchaku. Yep, like a martial arts weapon. Quick shout out to the developer. Let's hop over to their GitHub page real quick and smash that star button to support their work. Now here's the deal. Nunchaku uses specialty trained models you need to download first. Don't worry, I'll walk you through installing everything later. Once everything's set up, you point your workflow to these models right here. See my setup? I've got the base model plus two actors. Canny for edge control and a few for in painting and out painting. We'll test those soon. Now let's talk settings. The cache threshold defaults to 0.12. Think of this as your speed versus quality dial. Crank it up for faster renders but lower details. Or set it to zero for mask quality, slower times. Right now, the only attention method available is Nunchaku FP16. That's locked in and ready to go. The CPU offload setting runs on auto by default. This acts like a smart memory manager. If your GPU is under 14GB VRAM, it automatically shifts some work to your CPU. Handy for avoiding crashes but might add a few seconds. If you know your GPU is tight on VRAM, you can force this to enable manually. Everything else? Just leave it as is for now. That's all there is to it. When it comes to the text encoder loader, here's the scoop. It works similarly to the dual clip loader. You could use dual clip loader, the workflow will still run without errors, but I recommend sticking with this dedicated text encoder loader for best results. Got plenty of VRAM? Go for the FP16 version of the T5 encoder. Working with just 8 gigabytes, the GGUF version of T5 is your best bet. Don't sweat the other parameters, leave them as is. Pro tip for lower VRAM setups. This unload model node is your secret weapon. Think of it as a memory janitor. Once text encoding is done, it automatically clears those heavy models from VRAM. Set it and forget it. Alright, let's move on to the next group and run this thing. Let's put this head to head. Over here, we've got our trusty Flux model setup using PixelWave. You know I swear by this for quality. If you've seen other tutorials, you've watched PixelWave crush it against other Flux models. But check the clock. This render just took 112 seconds for the case sampler. Meanwhile, Nunchaku pumped out a similar image in 26 seconds. That's like comparing a sports car to a bicycle. Now let's eyeball these results. At first glance, both look solid, but leaning closer. See how Nunchaku's version has those sprinkles of cinnamon freckles? And check the jackets for trim. Nunchaku's threads look sharp enough to print your finger. But maybe close-ups don't tell the whole story. Let's jump to full body shots. I'll skip the weight, you get the idea. First up, our Nunchaku special. Apologies for mangling the name. Second, Pixel Waves carefully tune output. The difference hits you immediately. 
Nantaku's eyes, crystal clear irises with depth you could swim in. Pixel waves got this weird smudge in the eyes. Hands are decent in both, but here's the kicker. Pixel waves straight up forgot the foot. The visible toes look like melt wax sculptures. Nantaku clearly better. The wild part, Nantaku's not just faster. It's actually better where it counts. Speed and quality in one package? Sign me up. Let's kick things up a notch with Turbo Laura. First switch. We are ditching Pixel Wave for Flux FP8 version since Pixel Wave hits Laura's. Crank those sampling steps down to 8. Let's run it. Down. Case sampler clocks 40 seconds. Better, but still crawling compared to Nunchaku's 26 second magic. Now for the real test. Comparing image quality. Honestly, Nunchaku's version blows this out of the water. The details are sharper, the textures more realistic. It's just clearly superior output. Now the real shocker, Nunchaku actually works with Laura too. Slap on a turbo Laura. Holy smokes, 17 seconds flat. But here's the catch. Check these details. The image quality took a noticeable hit. Turbo Laura gave you NASCAR speed with potato camera quality. So here's my take. While Turbo Laura can give Nunchaku an extra speed boost, the quality trade-off isn't worth it in my opinion. Regular Laura's, sure, go for it. But I'd steer clear of turbo versions unless you're absolutely prioritizing speed over quality. Alright, let's try something fun. Comparing Nunchaku with another speed boosting tool called Wave Speed. Fresh work blur loaded. Nunchaku keeps its Euro nodes. For Wave Speed, I'm using Pixel Wave again. And these two nodes here are part of Wave Speed setup. The rather draw deep threshold parameter works kinda like Nanchako's cache threshold. Higher values means faster but lower quality. Final results? Wave speed limps in at 84 seconds with decent quality. Nanchako's saving margaritas at the finish line with 26 second renders. Now here's where Nanchako becomes a total rock star. It actually works with ControlNet. Let me show you how it handles candy edge detection. I've got this reference image, and here's its candy edge outline. We use this to generate new images and see how tightly Nunchaku sticks to those edges. First up, the classic flash candy method. I'm using the Q5 version of the candy model. That's the GTF format, by the way. Wait for it. And boom! 196 seconds later, we finally get an image. Yikes, that's slow. Now let's switch to Nantaku. The setup's almost the same, except the model path now says Kani to load Nantaku's special Kani version. Down in 9 seconds. Wow, that's lightning speed. But hold on, don't celebrate too soon. I accidentally set the cache threshold way too high, which tanked the image quality. Let me dial it back to 0.12 and try again. Okay, 25 seconds this time. Still way faster than Flux Kenny.
but what about quality? Let's zoom in. The overall layout matches, but look at the skirt details, specifically where it drips down. Flash Candy captures those dedicated folds perfectly, while Nachaku's version gets a little messy. So here's the takeaway. If you're racing against time and tiny details aren't critical, Nachaku's Candy model is your hero. But if you need every pixel flawless, stick with Flash Candy, even if it feels like waiting for paint to dry. Oh, and this is just one way to use Candy with Nachaku. Let's try another approach. This time we are testing the Flux Union Control Net model. Here I set the Control Net type to Canny, but the model itself is actually a general Flux Depth model, not a dedicated Canny one. Let's wait for the image. Okay, done in 38 seconds. Now check out this other method. The node group I mentioned earlier uses the dedicated SVD quant canny model instead. This time the image finishes in 25 seconds, faster than the union control net approach. But let's compare the results. The union control net image the poses don't match the reference at all. Is the control net strength too low? Let me test that. This time, cranking the control net strength and end percent both to one. Now the image is ready. Mm. Even at full power, the poses still look off. Both methods struggle to nail the reference pose. So here's the thing, Union Control F Candy isn't perfect for precision, but it's flexible. You can juggle multiple Control F types, like Candy, Depth, whatever, without downloading separate models each time. Downside, it gathers more VRAM. If you skip Union Control F and use dedicated models like SVD Quant Candy, you'll save VRAM but those models hog your disk space instead. Oh, and right now, there's no dedicated SVD quant open post model, so your options are limited. It's all about balancing speed, quality, and your hardware's limits. By the way, I've tested Nunchaku's Fuel and the Redux models too. I packed all the workflow files and the screenshots into a zip. Link in the description below. Grab it and tinker yourself. Up next, I'll walk you through installing custom nodes and models for Nunchaku. Stay tuned. Alright, let's get Nunchaku set up. Normally, you'd install custom nodes in Confia through Confia Manager, but with Nunchaku, there's a twist. You need to grab a special wheel file first. I'll link the full Nunchaku GitHub guide in the description, but let me walk you through the key steps. First things first, make sure you got PyTorch 2.5 or higher installed. For example, you can use this command to install PyTorch 2.6. When you fire up Confira later, check the terminal logs. I can show you PyTorch version right there. Next, head to Hugging Face and download the correct wheel file for Nunchaku. There are tons of options to focus on the file name. If you're on Python 3.11 and PyTorch 2.6, look for a wheel with Torch 2.6 and CP311 in the name. Quick note. Files with Linux in the name are for cloud GPU setup. Most of us can ignore those. Now here's the critical part for Windows users using the portable Confira package. You must install Nunchaku into Confira's own Python environment. Here's how. Launch Confira and watch the terminal. It will show the exact Python path it's using. That's the one you need. For example, when I start mine, I can see the Python path right here in the console. Once you've got that path, you use that specific Python executable to install Nunchaku. In my case, I'm using a local path for the installation command. But here's a handy tip. You don't actually need to download the wheel file to your computer first. You can just copy the direct path from Hugging Face and use that in your installation command instead. This saves you a step and keeps things nice and simple. 
The key things to remember is making sure you are using Confluence bounded Python. That's what makes everything work smoothly together. If you are use your system's default Python by accident, the installation might not work properly when you try to use it in Confluent later. Once the wheels installed, go back to the Confluent Manager, search for Nunchakun, and hit install. Then you are ready to roll. But wait, we are almost there. Before you can use Nunchaku, you need to grab some SVD quant models from Hugging Face. I'll drop the link below. Look for models with INT4 in their names. Those are the ones most of us need. If you see FP4, those are for fancy new Blackwell GPUs like the RTX 5090, whatever those job. Here's the drill. Click the model name to go to its download page. Copy the exact model name. Then create a new folder inside confuis slash models slash unit and name it exactly that. Go to the files and versions tab. Download every file there and dump them all into your new folder. Once that's done, you're golden. File up Nunchaku and test those workflows I shared earlier. To wrap up, Nunchaku is seriously impressive tech with huge potential. Peep their development roadmap. They are adding wild new features nonstop. Shout out to the devs for crashing it. I'll be dropping more Nunchaku workflows soon, so smash that subscribe if you are into speed demons and AI magic. Thanks for hanging out and catch you in the next one.